these first two presentations that um, either of them could have been a full full webinar that we could have had great conversation, but I like your point to start conversations here. Um, so next up is Sylvia Orner from the University of Scranton, and I'll invite you now to share your screen. Yeah, hello. Hi, hello. Confirming that we see the right view and we can hear Excellent. you fine. Thank you. Oh, oh, good. You're not yeah. seeing my email. <laughs> yeah. um, so I just want to say good morning or afternoon or uh, evening, wherever you're at. Uh, my name is Sylvia Orner. I am the Collection and Resource Management Librarian at the University of Scranton. We're located in Scranton, Pennsylvania, uh, probably most famous for the office, uh, if anyone's familiar. But... I'm really excited to have this opportunity to uh, discuss a faculty citation analysis project that I conducted uh, sort of as part of an overall library collection assessment. And for reasons I'm gonna get into a little bit later, um, this is a way that we never really thought we would be able to assess our collection. Uh, we never thought it would be possible until I learned about Open Alex. So I'm, I'm really excited uh, to be able to share this with all of you today. So just some background uh, before we get started, I wanted to tell you a little bit about me and my institution, the University of Scranton. It's a, a small to medium sized private university. Our library serves about 4,300 full-time students and about 400 uh, full and part-time faculty. And that also includes nine faculty librarians. Um, we are not primarily a research institution. I am not a researcher. Um, I don't have any kind of background in computer programming. I don't really consider myself a coder, even though I did do some code for this project. And I just thought it was important for folks to know that because I, I kind of wanted people to realize that no matter where you're coming from or what your skill level is, you can still find ways to engage with Open Alex that are meaningful for you and your institution. So this project sort of came around in, in part because of a question. How well are our library collections meeting our user needs? And of course, we have over the years, you know, collected usage statistics. But as you can imagine, use doesn't always equate to usefulness. Um, so my initial thought was to start with an analysis of works that were cited by our faculty in their research. And as I mentioned, you know, we're not primarily known for our research, but our faculty do publish regularly. So analyzing the sources that our faculty were citing and seeing how often we at the library were able to provide access to them seems like a good first step in assessing the usefulness of our collection. And there's um, a lot of good literature out there to support the use of citation analysis for collection assessment, but um, as I was reading through it, it was kind of a little disheartening for me because a lot of them talk about using proprietary data sources and other resources that uh, I just didn't have access to. So I was kind of stuck with this problem of where do I find this information? You know, we don't have any kind of institutional repository or reliable reporting system for faculty scholarship. And limited time and resources, you know, kind of preventing me from using more labor intensive methods like just collecting that data from faculty CVs. So when I learned about Open Alex, I was like, oh, yay, you know, this is my chance. Um, and just as a, a personal aside for me personally, it was really important in this project that I use, you know, non proprietary and easily accessible tools. Um, not just because my budget for this was like zero dollars and the team consisted of like just me, um, but because I, I kind of firmly believe that open access and open source uh, create a more equitable scholarly community. So uh, if one of my colleagues wanted to repeat my process, I didn't want cost to be a barrier. So that's why I was really excited to be able to use Open Alex for my data source. And I also used the Open Alex R package for the R programming language. And for those of you who are not familiar with R, that is a programming language that's primarily used for like statistical analysis and data visualization. Um, 
And I did want to note most most of the reason I needed to use OpenLXR for data retrieval. Um, a lot of the work for this was done in the fall of 2023, and that was before OpenAlex had. It was like right before OpenAlex had introduced its its new, very uh, nice and very pretty user interface. Um, so to get the process started. Uh, I first created a data set using OpenAlexR to retrieve all works by authors who are associated with our research organization registry. And I also chose to look, you know, from a certain date rather than all, all time. I chose like 10 years. Um, and I, I don't have a lot of time to talk about the data cleanup and verification that I did once this list was generated, but I, I did just want to say that there is some, some process there. Uh, especially you want to verify your authors. I found we had a uh, very few instances where uh, folks from a nearby institution, Penn State Scranton, were mistakenly being associated with our ROR number. But you know, once you find things like that, it's easy enough to get them out of your data set as long as you know they're there. So once I generated this list, I really wanted to focus on this, uh, the referenced works. So using uh, this data, I was able to isolate all of these unique IDs for works that were cited in faculty research and create a list of open Alex IDs for all those publications. And then this is where, where the really fun part came in. Uh, once I had that list, I was able to create a new data frame with data for all of those works cited. So in order to generate that list, I, I had to query all of the um, open Alex IDs that I had collected. I had to figure out how to run it in a loop because you can only query 50 at a time. I think that's still the case. I know it was when when I, I was working on this. Um, but you know, this was a lot of trial and error for me, but after a little bit, I was able to retrieve data for about 16,000 unique citations. Um, and I was then able to run this data against a list of our current library holdings, which um, I got from a variety of sources, from both from our catalog and from our uh, knowledge base, which for us is, is EBSCO's um, holdings management. So then running those lists against each other, I, could, I was able to see what referenced works were also represented in our library collection. And what did I find? So um, overall, I looked at data from uh, 1,045 faculty publications. And in total, they had 16,786 unique works cited. Um, when looking at the works cited, I discovered that about 24% of them were open access, which was really cool for me to see because we do actively promote the use of open access and open educational resources at our university. So it was very exciting for me to see how faculty are utilizing open access in their own research. And after examining the overlap between our current library holdings and all the non-open access works cited, I found that during the time period I surveyed, the library was able to meet the faculty research needs about 65% of the time. And really, that was a lot better than I had expected, given that we support um, a wide variety of disciplines from, you know, the humanities to the sciences, health sciences, um, and just considering you know, the number of databases and subscriptions that we have to offer. And honestly, more than that, this was very neat for me because it was a way to kind of get to know our faculty better. I was able to you know, look at the faculty publication data set, uh, find out what topics they're publishing on, where they're publishing, and you know, whether they're publishing open access. It was a, a really interesting glimpse into their scholarly lives, and it's already started some conversations um, here in the library about what we can do to better support them. And it's also got us thinking um, how we can further use the open Alex data, not only for managing and assessing our collections, but also helping to support research across this institution. So uh, Jessica, I was really excited to hear what you're doing there and got some very good ideas. So. Um, so yeah, and that's kind of why I'm here today to see what all of you are doing. Um, 
And if you'd like to reach out, I'm I'm still very novice at this, so I'd be happy to hear any feedback or if you have any specific questions about the process, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I will I will put it in the chat, but there's also more information about the Open Alex R package if you're interested. And also, I did put uh, the full code for this project on a GitHub if anyone is interested in looking at that as well. And I talked much faster than I meant to, so I, I think we uh, still have a little bit of time, but thank you all. No, that's okay, because if we have more time, we just get more Q&A at the end. So thank you. That was a great presentation. And I noticed that Trang Lee from the Open Alex R package has responded. This is one of the great things I like about this open community is that now that you've shown this use case, the people who are developing the Open Alex R package can make that use case even easier. But in the meantime, you can share that um, your results with others.